Welcome back. You're back, I'm back, and this bloody board is back. So if you remember this board from a few videos ago, we spent ages painting it, getting it looking schmick, and I think it was the day after I got or gave the board back to the owner, he called me and said he could not for the life of him get any fin into this box. So it turns out the box was installed very poorly, the box was essentially installed too high, so when it came to final sanding, there's not enough box there to fit a fin. The box is about a centimetre and a half deep, and a fin base is about two centimetres tall. So it just wasn't going to work. So our board owner had a few options here. I could have quite easily customised a fin base so he had a designated fin for this board. We could have pulled the box out and just put a new one in. But seeing as this board would have originally had a glass on fin and I had an atlas template, he decided to try and get it back to as original as possible and go with a customised glass on fin. So in or two videos ago, we made that fin. So if you guess correctly on which board that fin was for, 10 points to you and today we're going to put it on to this board. So first step of course is to use the laminate trimmer to route away as much of that fin box as we possibly can. I've thinned out the walls here so I'm just using a screwdriver to get the last of the plastic out. Turns out that whoever installed this box was an absolute Uncle Tony and the amount of Q-cell left over, you can see that entire wall, half of the floor of the route is all Q-cell. So back to it with the router, we're going to make our route a little bit deeper than the box was to remove as much Q-cell as possible, we're going to make it slightly wider to remove as much as possible and then again using the flathead screwdriver. I'm just digging out as much of that resin as I possibly can. We're making a hell of a mess here of our route, but that's alright because we're going to replace the foam with our pour foam, so we can make as much mess as we need to to remove all that excess resin that we don't need. You can see at the floor of the route here there was this giant chunk of Q-cell in there as well, so I dug that out too. So we have a weird deep spot in the floor of our route, but we're going to clean all that up and fill it all back in with a 56 kg pour foam. So I'm actually going to do two pours here and this first pour I'm just going to fill where that big chunk of resin was just to level the base off. I'm then just lifting the board to level it and so all the foam doesn't run towards the tail. After this pour I'm going to mix up a bigger batch of foam and pour the rest of it. Same thing because of the rocker of the tail, I don't want all that foam running to the tail end of the route, so just lifting it up, watching it expand, do its thing, let it firm up a little bit, and then I can put it back down and leave it 24 hours before we start messing with it. So back to the next day and we can start cutting just the higher spots off and then getting ready to sand it all to shape. It was a pretty deep pour this one, so we got some significant air bubbles. Um, I tried to sand them out, but you can see I've sanded it pretty low and those air bubbles are still there, as well as kind of a spot where our original pour is or has failed to connect with our second pour. So I'm not really comfortable laminating over that and I have sanded it quite low. So what I'm going to do here is just drop some foam into those holes and then using the squeegee, I'm going to squeegee it all really tight. Of course we could mix some Q-cell with some resin for this stage to fill those pinholes and kind of get it to a, a good surface for laminating or a good level for laminating. But the whole point of this exercise was to remove excess resin and Q-cell so I don't really want to be adding more Q-cell and resin at this stage. So I'm just sanding it all to the right height and the right shape here. And then before we laminate, I want to remove a big chunk of the paint that I applied. Because I applied so much paint, I would rather be laminating to fiberglass than onto three layers of paint. So I'm going to remove enough paint that I can get my lamination in there and adhere straight to fiberglass. You can see that giant patch of Q-cell to the right of the route, so it's it's still there. Whoever did this definitely used an excess amount of resin. Here we have one layer of four ounce glass at the bottom that I'm putting on now and then over the top of that we're going to have one layer of six ounce glass. So that's going to give us eight ounces over this repair total. But these boards were built like absolute boats back in the day so we don't have to worry about weight. So if I can make my repair really strong 
and remembering that we're going to be glassing a fin to this surface, the stronger the better. I don't want that fin delaming or lifting up or breaking off. Once that lamination's kicked off, we can mask it off and add our hot coat and then leave that to set and we are ready to sand with our repair done. So with our hot coat cleared, we're able to sand it all down, we're going to get it to a nice shape, get rid of our masking tape edges. You'll notice that my hot coat also doesn't cover the paint, so everything is adhered to fiberglass. And that is our repair done. So with the repair done, we can start marking out the placement for our fin. So the first thing I'm going to do is mark where I want the front of the fin and where I want the back of the fin. And then we're going to pull up our shape of square and we're going to find the center of the board so that we're able to start working out exactly where that fin's gonna sit. It can be pretty hard without a stringer to find the center of the board where the stringer would normally be. So we use the rails to measure and we find the middle between each rail essentially. So now we know exactly where the front of our fin's gonna sit, we know where the back's gonna sit and we know where that center line is. So we've got our placement for our fin. The next stage will be just to tack it on, get it where we want it sitting before glassing. So I would usually use super glue for this stage just to tack it on, but it turned out my super glue had gone rock solid in the tube and I was far too lazy to drive down to the store to buy more. So we ended up using resin for this one. So I have here an insanely over catalyzed mix of poly resin. I've also preloaded some tape on the rail. So once the fin's in place, I'll be able to just bring that tape over and lock that fin down tight. So just putting some dots up and down our pencil line and then I'm going to put some dots up and down the fin or coat the fin. You don't want to put too much resin because if you put too much, your fin will actually be able to slide around on the surface of the board. So you don't want too much resin, but you want enough that once it kicks, you're going to be able to play with it while glassing and it's not going to break off. Like I said, I had my tape preloaded on the rail. So once I'm pretty happy with its placement and its angle, just by eye, I'm able to lock it down with the tape. And then you're gonna spend a little bit of time just tweaking that tape, tweaking the fin, just to get that perfect placement. You can use your angle gauge that you'd use on a box install here, but you're making the bold assumption that the convex of this old board is actually even and equal both sides. So I would trust your eyes over the angle gauge. Definitely still use both, but definitely eyeball it a lot from every angle that you possibly can. While we're letting that kick, uh, we're gonna make some rovings because that's gonna be the next stage. So I use this insanely thick boat cloth. I actually don't know what gauge it is, but the stuff is like carpet and it's essentially made from two separate layers of fiberglass rovings. So I pull a length out of this cloth and then I just pull as many roving strings out as I need and that's how I'm getting my rovings. So I want 30 in total. I'm gonna to have 15 rovings on each side of the fin. So I'm gonna pull 30 out and by then our resin should be kicked and our fin should be ready for these rovings to be added. We're just gonna final check the angle here, make sure our fin is nice and vertical. So I'll use the angle checker as well as my eye here. I'm about a degree out, I would say, but that could be from the hand foiling of the fin. It could be the sh shape of the convex on the bottom of the board. So it's pretty good. I'm pretty happy with its angle. So we're now ready to go. I've masked one end of my rovings up just to keep them all together. Um, I've papered off the paint that I don't want resin to drip on. I've got myself a brush and we're ready to go. So terrible angle on this side guys, apologies for that, but essentially I'm gonna dip my rovings into the resin and I wanna saturate them as much as I possibly can. Once I feel like they're all soaked with resin, I'm gonna lift them up out of the tub and I'm basically gonna wring out all of the excess resin with my fingers. Once I've got that excess resin off, I'm gonna put them in place. They're running about an inch longer than the fin on each end, but where I've masked the end of my rovings, I've kept that dry, so I'll be able to cut that off at the end. And then using the brush, I'm just gonna kind of lightly tap it and jab it into place where I want it. Once I've done that, I can move on to the other side. Same deal on the other side, gonna dunk all those rovings into my resin, get them fully saturated, then wring them out with my fingers, removing all that excess resin, and then I can put them in place, 
and adjust their placement, just poking them a little bit with the brush. Once I'm happy with their placement, I'm gonna use my thumbs and my fingers to wipe from the center of the fin out towards the ends. You don't wanna start at one end and drag towards the other because you're gonna slide your rovings up and down the board. So I'm starting in the middle and pushing them hard against that fin. I don't wanna see any air bubbles in those rovings, so not only am I pushing it hard against the board and hard against the fin, but I'm removing all the excess resin and all of the air that might be trapped within those rovings. So don't be afraid to use a bit of force. Any extra adjustments needed can be done with the brush. I also don't want lumps of resin on the board, like little droplets, because I want to laminate straight over this. So I'm going to thin them out. And then I don't want resin or big pools of resin running onto my paper and welding my paper to my original paint job. So just a little bit of tidy up with the brush here. Once our roving's cured, we can cut off the excess at the ends where we didn't wet it out. So get that out of the way because we don't need it anymore. We can now prep our cloth. So this is gonna have two kind of uh, oval shaped patches of cloth, one on each side at six ounces each. And they're only gonna run or about a third of the way up the fin. I don't want to affect the flex too much. Being poly, our resin isn't wet, but it's still tacky because there was no wax additive in it. So I'm able to preload these patches and get them into place. You notice that I'm still not putting them over the paint. So I'm gonna mask off for my hot coat right now so I can laminate it, leave it, and then hot coat straight away. So using the brush again kind of allows us to control the amount of resin we're putting on that cloth. We don't want resin running everywhere. We don't want runs down the fin. We don't want runs on the board going back towards the tape. So I can really slowly add my resin to my cloth, make sure it's wetted out, apply a bit of pressure with the brush just so we know it's adhered and it's pushed down nice and flat. No air bubbles where the rovings are and where that cloth is kind of bending from board to fin. And then once all that resin's on the cloth and our cloth looks good, we're just gonna use our fingers and squeeze both sides of our cloth together, trying to get a bit of a seal on the, the sharp edges of that fin. Once our lamination's kicked off, we can mix up some sanding resin and we're going to coat it up. And you'll notice the front of our rovings, which are still dry, we never wet them out. So this stage, we're gonna wet them, so just so we're able to sand them away when that time comes. A word of warning to the wise, don't try and film and do this step at the same time. It's really difficult, but we're basically taking the Stanley knife and we're just gonna cut off as much excess cloth as we can. First thing I'm gonna do is just sand away that piece of roving at the end. Then we're gonna keep going with 120. This is all using 120, so we're gonna buzz away our hot coat on the board side, get rid of those masking tape edges, I'm gonna change to 240 and a soft pad for both sides of the fin, just so I'm not changing the, the shape or the foil of the fin, because I've already kind of locked that in when I made it. And then once we're happy with that, we're gonna hand sand for 1700 days, uh, that gap where the board leads to the fin, using a soft pad and 120 again, and just go, go, go until it's all a nice shape. Once we've done all our 120 sanding, we're gonna 240 everything as well on the orbital, then bring it outside. We're gonna wet sand with 320, 400, 600, and then once we get to 800, we're gonna go outside of that painted tail patch. We can start doing all the pinstripes, sanding everything to 800, ready for painting. Once our wet sanding's finished, we bring it inside, dry it all off with a towel, and the fin is installed. So the only thing left to do now is to replace the paint. Here we go again. First thing we're gonna do is mask off getting ready for our red. So I'm not gonna paint the entire fin panel red again, which I accidentally did last time if you've seen that video. So I'm just gonna paint the area within this masking tape red, and then we'll let that kick, we'll give it a sand, then we can mask off for our green. So adding our red here, I don't wanna dose it up too heavily along the masking tape because that masking tape line, I'm gonna to have to sand away before we apply the green. And so I don't wanna to add too much sanding work for myself. And finally, I'm gonna add one more coat or one coat of clear over the top 
This is really only so that I can sand without fear of sanding through the red, because if I sand through the red in the wrong spot, obviously I've got to reapply the red before I can do the green. So this is just a little bit of extra protection. So once the red's cured and I've demasked it, this is what we're left with. So there's going to be sharp edges and they're going to be high where the paint met the masking tape. So these are what I'm trying to sand away. I want to feather them out so I can't feel them anymore, you can't see them. I basically want the edge of the red I've just sprayed to look like that red you can see below the green. So nice and feathered out. Very tedious work, but I managed to get the paint on thin enough that it wasn't too much of a mission to do it so I started this process at 320 just to break those lines down then moved my way up to 400, 600 to finish them off and then again 800 over the entire area so we know that everything's sanded to 800 still ready for that green. These type of jobs are so tedious, there's so much masking involved, so much preparation involved, the painting itself takes a matter of minutes but the preparation for the painting is insane so all in all this job took me just shy of two weeks of course I was working it in between other jobs as well but it was in the shed for about two weeks this board before it was finished and as well as that all the filming and the editing process to get this video out to you guys that's five to ten hours somewhere within that range so if you are at this stage of the video still watching and you haven't subscribed to the channel if you hit the subscribe button it would be very much appreciated it makes a big difference and it's pretty easy to do and the best part about it is it's free so just like last time we did it we're going to put two layers of our green down and then we're going to pull all of the masking tape off the fin and we're going to pull the masking tape off of our red pinstripes and then we're going to add two layers of our matte clear on top of all of that and that's so we don't have kind of highs and lows in the paint the clear coat's going to fill everything in and it's going to keep the fin a consistent finish with the paint job we're going to spray our fin first because the overspray falling from the fin to the board itself is going to make for a dry finish so we're going to make the fin nice and wet with our clear coat and then we're going to do the board second so that the board's nice and wet as well and we cover all that dry overspray Once we're all demasked and we're dry the next day, we're going to pull it outside. We're going to wet sand everything to 1200, which is how it was finished originally. So we're going to tie in what we've just sprayed with what we sprayed last time, all to a 1200 finish. And we're done. The board is finally done. It's going home and hopefully it never comes back again. Really happy to close this chapter of small kind ding repairs, have this board go out, be enjoyed and not ever return. Oh, I know it's been a long video guys and thank you so much for watching. If you're still watching, thank you so much and be proud of yourself. I'll see you in the next one. I'm not sure what it is yet, but we've had some jobs come in this week. So I'll pick one and we'll follow along and that'll be out at some stage. Cheers guys. Appreciate it as always. Have a good one. Cheehoo!